everybody, it's Lace, and today I have for you some random, random quality, quality of life, life tips. Life. As you're out there in the world looking for nodes in all the wrong places, I've noticed that sometimes it can be a little difficult to spot the nodes, and they seem to be sometimes not quite as reactive. You might see them visually before they pop up on your tracker, but this tip right here should help alleviate some of those issues. There's two ways to do this, and one, of course, is to hit escape and then go into journal or J for journal, and uh, then you can go in there and individually pin or unpin them. Uh, there's not an unpin all that I've seen yet, but anyway, I would unpin them all if you know you're just not really doing any of your quests and you're just wanting to gather. As you're leveling up your various skills, whether it be skinning or mining or whatever, um, the higher you get, of course, more things will pop up onto that tracking menu. Uh, and on my master spreadsheet in the quick list, of course, there's um, some all the unlocks for the various uh, types of things that you can track. One thing I'd like to see them add, though, is a way for me to uh, remove certain things from being tracked. That would also help keep the compass uh, clear. Hopefully uh, we can get that kind of quality of life thing added by them to where we can filter what we want to track. Uh, just like we can, you know, unpin the quest. I'd like to maybe not track little bunnies all the time. This second method might be uh, the most versatile. You'll just hit escape and your quest that you're tracking there in the upper right hand corner have three icons. Uh, one's for the pin on pin. One takes you to a little zoom in on the map so you can get some perspective and perhaps how far away it is gauging the distance because something just showing off as icon one, you don't know how far away it is. And lastly, that middle button will take you to the specific quest in your journal in case you can't remember your objectives or need more information. Personally, I think uh, hitting the pin unpin button through the escape key like we're doing here is going to be uh, the fastest way to get them off the screen, get your radar clear so that you can track them on your compass and all the bunnies too. So next tips for everybody that always asks these questions, how can I hide my headgear? For me, it's a matter of vanity, and I just don't want helmet head all the time. Super easy. Just go into your inventory, go to your helmet, click on it, and then go to the menu for change skin. And you might have multiple skins available for different types of things. That, that's going to be true on different pieces of gear as well, not just the helmet. But specifically, you can hide your helmet. If you're working on your territory standing before you purchase your first home, you're going to end up with a lot of wood and iron, perhaps, that you're going to planning on using for your furniture. But if you pre-craft your furniture, you'll drop a lot of that weight because the finished product weighs much less. Well, this is true for potions and things like that as well. But just specifically, I'm focusing on furniture because you know you're going to want to make some things. You're going to have to grind that skill up. And uh, this is just one way to help you with managing your storage before you actually move into your home. Speaking of furniture, I have a bit of a bone to pick, and that's in relation to the quality that they've put into the recipes themselves for furniture. Uh, they seem to be all copied and pasted, uh, where everything takes the exact same amount, especially in the lower tier so far that I've looked at. Uh, I think they should adjust this. It might also then affect XP because you'd be using you know, fewer mats, but I feel like it shouldn't be exactly the same for every single piece of furniture. What the hell are you doing with all those nails from the iron ingots? I want to know. This might be one you already know, but as you open up more uh, consumable slots where you can put your potions uh, and food and stuff, you can also store heavy amounts of potions, food, or water. There are some dry towns where they don't have water readily available in this zone, so sometimes you might want to just transport it in if you like crafting there. And uh, so you can just uh, drag things that are heavy to your consumable slot. You'll unlock these uh, pretty quickly. You'll get your third one at level 15 and your fourth one at level 25. So you'll be able to make use of them relatively early. Depending on how much time you've spent in beta, alpha, or whatever, you probably know this one. But for you new folks out there, if you're trying to get that mining skill up, don't go chasing nodes. Just find you a nice spot in the mountains there and just start whaling on some boulders. Maybe get yourself a cold brew, turn on a ball game or something, and just go to town. You could maybe even get your kids to do it. They might have to fight, though. There are a few critters about, 
But anyway, getting all this skills up right here, if you do it kind of near a town, you could also go back and then do your stone cutting to get those skill ups and then run back out. If it's too far, I wouldn't feel bad about just dropping the weight on the ground and keeping on going because there's nothing worse than getting out in the open field, finding that lovely star metal node and going, oh my God, I don't have enough skill. So spend an hour or two right when you first start the game and mine away, baby. When you get to your first starter town, you'll find that most of them tend to have a nice clump of trees right by the gates to where you can just go out there, clear cut the area, run back in, refine it, go back out, rinse and repeat. Now at launch, it might be a little more crowded. You might have to travel a little bit, but I would not dump my wood because you are going to need it for sure, especially if you're going to want to get a house. Uh, I like to make a game out of it too. I like to try to drop the trees on their heads, especially when you get up to level 50, you can do those mature trees. I don't really want the aged woods. Like I said, I just want to drop the trees on them. Now this isn't really a quality of life tip to help you out, but it's a quality of life feature in the game that I really appreciate. So many games that I've looked at, they have stupid naming recipes, the icons are ridiculous, and you just need to look at some of the icons on this food. I would eat this food. It looks great. I really think they did a good job on it, and I just wanted to point that out. It's nice to smell the roses every now and again. So, as we eagerly await launch, that's going to wrap this video. Take care, everybody. Happy hunting, and be safe.